Hi, everyone. Welcome to this month's Health Tech Entrepreneurs Meetup. Today's uh, speaker is Dr. Gil Blankenship, um, and he will be telling us his story of three exits, patience, rewards, and lessons learned. Uh, so we'll do our uh, usual introductions. Um, so when I call on your, uh, I'm going to go down the list to my right. Um, if I mention, uh, if I call your name, please unmute uh, and introduce yourself if you'd like. Uh, tell us who you are, what you're working on, uh, any, you know, any issue, any help you're looking for, any help you can provide. Uh, this will be a good, uh, great time to mention it. Um, so I can start. Hi, I'm Neo. I am a founder and CEO of Neurosonics Medical. I'm a neurosurgical startup. I'm also the vice president of business development at the MDC Studio, a startup studio building health and med tech companies. And I'm also an associate for the Verte Family of Funds, which is a uh, venture fund uh, focusing on investing in uh, high growth companies located in opportunity zones. All right. Um, I don't know the person, but uh, number starting with 301. Hmm. All right, I'll move to the next person. Um, Gil, I'm going to skip you because you can introduce yourself later. Uh, Cheryl? Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Cheryl Lohman. I'm the CEO and founder of Medaptic. Medaptic is an internet of medical things company. The flagship product is Quick Meds, which is a hospital med uh, bedside medication dispenser so patients can get their low risk PRN optional meds without needing to call for the nurse at the press of a button um, and have other product lines as well. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, Amy? Hi, I'm Amy Hazen. I've been guilt sidekick now for 34 years, I believe, through three acquisitions. Um, I do contracts, finance, and legal for MBC Studio. Wonderful. Uh, Jennifer? Everyone, nice to meet you. Uh, so I am a Hopkins doctoral candidate, but looking to explore my next venture. Um, and so I love coming to these meetings to learn about what everyone's up to. Wonderful, welcome. Uh, Hamid? <coughs> I will skip you. Uh, Hayden? Okay. Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. Sorry, I'll turn my camera on. Uh, hi, my name is Hayden. I am the owner and founder of Unsavvy Strategy. I'm kind of a different area of health tech. Um, so what I do is I'm a tech advocate for seniors. So I'm the one that actually goes into the home with the seniors and tries to help them and educate them on all the new technology that I feel is beneficial to them and then it's of course just you know their phones and apps on phones and things like that wonderful welcome uh let's see uh jeff gear hi my name is dr jeff gear i'm the founder and ceo of modular matter inc we're making a universally adjustable prosthesis socket uh, it's very low cost i'm also a principal engineer at mbc studio uh, and i've worked on all sorts of fun things great uh carrie Hi everyone, I just discovered you. I'm, I'm here on the uh, east or the west coast, sorry, uh, Bay Area. I don't know if you're local to Maryland only, but um, be aware you have a west coast junior mix. <laughs> um, so my background is mixed. I was originally a computer scientist and AI engineer. I left tech after about 15 years to move into healthcare. I'm a, a registered behavioral health clinician, but my real passion is doing medical troubleshooting around cancer, um, particularly prostate cancer patients, um, as well as the, the psychological impacts of trauma. I specialize in men and men's occupational trauma as well as uh, prostate. Um, and I'm here today because I'm also newly consulting to a med tech startup. And I wanna enter this space with an exit in mind because I, I think in their case, knowing the team and knowing their ambitions, I, I want to get super strategic from the get-go on how to plan to get out. Wonderful. Uh, Malik? Turn my camera on. Hey, yes. everybody. My name is uh, Malik Little. I, I know I'm new to the group here. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Enigma Science and Technology. Um, it's a company that uh, recently spun out of Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Uh, we're developing capability. Um, which is a little bit of a cross between med and also public safety. So some of the capability we're developing is for law enforcement, 
uh, to help out in the areas of uh, trying to help them prevent arrest-related deaths. And my background, I'm an engineer. I used to work at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab as a, a systems engineer. Wonderful. Uh, Nat? Oh, I, we can't hear you for some reason. Hmm. All right, how's that? Oh, yep, yeah, that's good. Perfect. I'm um, sorry about that. Uh, hi, I'm Nat Judge. Um, I work as a data scientist in the financial industry right now, but uh, while in graduate school, I had an internship at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona, and I really liked it. And so I'm kind of trying to get back into kind of more of the health analytics uh, area. And um, this is my first event here, so I'm really excited. Nice to meet you all. Welcome. Uh, Vin? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Vin Menon. I am currently doing some independent consulting, primarily with nonprofits. Uh, my background is pretty general. I started in engineering and then went back for an MBA. Um, I'm looking really to learn and also at opportunities to potentially support or maybe join a venture. Uh, and I'm in the DC area, by the way. Mm, wonderful. Um, and I saw Chrissy come in. Oh, Chrissy, you sound really quiet. Chrissy, oh. I heard her say microphone issues. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, all right, okay, <laughs> we'll keep going. Um, so yes, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so I'd like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Gil Blankenship. He is currently the founder and chairman of the MDC Studio, a startup studio uh, dedicated to building medical and health technology companies from the earliest, earliest stages. And he's a former professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Maryland College Park. Uh, so today he's gonna reflect on his career so far of building multiple tech companies, selling products all over the world and exit, exiting three companies. And now he's building uh, many more uh, companies uh, in the health and medical uh, tech technology space through the MDC studio. And he'll, uh, he can also provide his uh, perspectives on the med tech uh, scene in Maryland. So Gil, I will hand it off to you. All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit in a roundabout way about um, my experience building uh, technology-based companies. Uh, so it's not exactly a lecture on how to do it. It's sort of how I did it or how Amy and I did it. So we'll see how it goes. So one of the things I've always disliked are these old guys or middle-aged guys who had an exit or something and they come along and they give you advice on how to do it. You can do it too. Well, okay, let me explain to you how I got to the point where I'm entitled to give you advice. So the first part of my career, I was a very obscure researcher. I worked in applied mathematics. Um, I became a professor of engineering kind of on a whim. Uh, the advice of a 19-year-old fraternity boy. Uh, I got a PhD because it was easier than actually working, so I stayed there. And for about 20 years, I did research in applied mathematics, and I wrote papers that looked like the, the thing on the right there, more equations than words. Um, wonderful, obscure papers. I don't know what they're about anymore, but they were fantastic when I wrote them. I went to cool places, Cancun, Trento, and gave talks, which were like that. <laughs> so I did that for about 20 years. And then at age 40, um, uh, I was broke. So I remember working all those years um, and had a bad divorce, I didn't have any money. I had a kid who was headed to college and I needed a way to pay for it. So a friend invited me to join his company. There were seven of us, six partners. So a word of caution, one partner is enough, maybe two. Two is good, but six, no. The company began failing almost immediately. Uh, I got some advice from a real businessman, as they say, 
He told me I had to get rid of the other guys, so I fired four of them. It was very nasty. Uh, but anyway, uh, that left us with uh, three, and I later fired one of those. And then we ran for a few years. We're a tiny company, government contracts, and we merged uh, with a friend's company, uh, Amy's uh, father, fantastic guy, uh, professor at University of Maryland. And the company became Techno Sciences. And we didn't have a logo and we kept redesigning it. And so we decided to go over the top. We'd spread the company across the entire globe. Really? Okay. Anyway, uh, we were together, uh, Lee and I, for oh, seven years, maybe, ballpark. Um, Amy was always there. And uh, Lee retired to sail around the world with his wife. He just left. He was the best at retiring I have ever seen. Left all the papers in his desk. He just left. It's amazing. So now I'm in charge. There are about 20 of us. We have an international business. It's really cool. I go from being a, a control theory a nerdy guy to international businessman and just like that. That was so cool. Well, it turns out if you're an international business, you have to actually go to those places. That sounds great, except it's really tiring. So I went through three passports. In the course of this, I actually sold something. I sold the Italian Coast Guard uh, search and rescue ground station. They bought it. I couldn't believe they bought it. Um, and they installed it, and we installed it. And they immediately saved lives. That is so cool. And the Coast Guard guy, Captain D'Amico, became a friend of mine. He was an amazing character, is an amazing character. And then we sold these things in Algeria and Nigeria. I had those places to myself. They're dangerous. No one ever goes there. It was fantastic. Always go to a dangerous country at the end of a civil war. Don't go in the middle. Korea, no civil war, but anyway. Pretty soon we're in 22 countries. I go through three passports. They keep adding pages. They get so thick if you're sitting on them, it's very painful. Lots of frequent flyer miles and permanent jet lag. So I'm actually only two years older than Nao, but the jet lag has got to me. So the company looked like it was a lot bigger than it actually is. We were doing uh, advanced development, SBIRs. We were doing search and rescue. That was our main business. And then we got into border security. I'll tell you about that later. And we made a spin-off company. I'll come back to that. So we're all over the place. We're in all the dark countries and actually a few more, but I forgot how to, how to darken in those countries. But anyway, so we live up to our logo. We really are all over the place. I think there are 22 blue countries there. It was fantastic. What an experience. Um, you know, getting to go to places like that and sell people things. It's, a, it's just absolutely amazing. And they were saving lives. So we were saving lives all over the place. Our equipment is, that is. So our equipment looked like these two boxes in the middle here, these two antennas. It was cost about a million dollars uh, for people to buy one. Uh, we built big command stations that looked really amazing. Uh, there's probably just one or two PCs back there, but they looked really cool. We built this amazing little beacon over here. We never sold one. In fact, that's the only one we ever built, but hey, it looked cool. But still, we seem to be kind of stuck. We, we are doing great things. We're having a fantastic time. We have the same, same 20 people. Our name isn't on the building. We don't even own a truck. So the trappings of success in a business, we don't have, no truck. So we begin to look around for a new line of business. Um, I met an English uh, soldier of fortune, protecting ships from piracy. We formed a company called Trident Maritime, really cool name. We did a million dollars in the first year of sales. We made a lot of money. Here we go. So now we visit shipping companies to try to talk them into buying our service. They don't want it. They have insurance. 
They don't care if the ship sinks. The crew are contract workers. They don't care if they get captured. And my partner went to Iraq and joined the Iraq war. So that was the end of that. I sold a website for $1,200, so I got a little something out of it. So the next idea was coastal stations. We're in all these countries. They all have coasts by definition. And we'll get into that line of business. So after going to Indonesia 20 times, I managed to talk them into giving us a contract for coastal radar stations. We've got a $2 million contract, something in that ballpark. I don't remember. A lot of jet lag from so many trips. How hard can it be to make a coastal station? It's just a little box with some computers and radar. It's not that hard. Well, it turns out it's actually really hard. We went broke. This was the second time we had gone broke, so we were experienced at being broke. Uh, the U.S. Navy bailed us out. We ultimately got something like a hundred million dollar contract uh, to do to build these stations. Coastal radar does it. We're all over the place. We build all these places where there are dots. We have a warehouse. See that cool warehouse there with all those flags? We have forklifts. No truck, but forklifts. Our name is on the building. About a hundred people work for us, I think. And the US Navy paid for all of it. That's, what more can you do? We built grid-free power stations. Here's a coastal station. See, it really is, is just a tower with a couple of spinning things on top. Not that hard, not that hard. This is a $200,000 uh, uh, thermal imager, a little tricky getting that out of the country. But anyway, we built all these stations, the world's longest coastal surveillance station. I used to, to give this guy at Lockheed Martin a hard time because they were in the coastal station business and they had never built anything like this. And I was trying to get them to buy us, but the guy never got the message. So what can I say? We won prizes. We were the high tech company of the year. I kept wondering why my friends are winning all these prizes. And my company, I think, was better, and we weren't winning any prizes. Turns out you have to apply. I didn't know that. So we applied. We won many prizes. We got little trophies, et cetera. We got to go to, to dinners where we had to pay for the dinner. Anyway, I was an international businessman of the year. Can you believe it? A mathematician who wasn't that good is a International Businessman of the Year. I thought this was a pretty bad thing for Maryland. But anyway, there were seven of us and the other people were real, uh, real international stars. Uh, I hired a CEO. I became chairman of the board. Fantastic title. I like the sound of that. But the board is just me and the CEO and Amy. We never met. It was just in name only, but I got the title, you got to say. The CEO is a great guy. He travels all over the place. He expands a company into Morocco. We go over there. They have 2,500 miles or kilometers, I don't remember, of coastline. They want 50 more stations. We're going to be rich. Well, okay. We crush our competitor in the search and rescue business. I told them to buy us out. They didn't buy us out, so we won all the jobs and crushed them, sort of. Anyway, we were on our way to a monopoly. We got $130 million in uh, SBIR awards. We're doing great. So when someone like me exits a company like this, what can you learn from this? You can't do this. I couldn't do it again, right? I'm not sure what you learn from these kind of talks, but let's keep going. So in the meantime, we had made a startup company, Amy and I, called TRX Systems. I can't remember, in the early 2000s. So I keep watching the news in the 1990s. Everybody on the West Coast is starting a company, right? Nonsense companies, invisible window shades, self-piercing ears. We'll deliver groceries for in 30 minutes for free. They raise a billion dollars. I think, hey, I can do that. I have bad ideas, lots. Just requires an idea and a big ego. Well, I got the ego. 
So we've had, hit upon an idea. It's actually a beautiful idea. We'll track firefighters indoors. They run in, they get lost. They, uh, uh, they, get, they get in a really bad spot. Other firefighters go in to find them. So it depends on being able to locate a person indoors. How hard can it be? Well, it turned out it took six years before we could get anywhere. So we set out pitching. We're gonna be a, a venture capital company. We pitch and we pitch and we pitch. We went to every place we could find around the Beltway. We raised zero dollars. We had a good idea. We had a good market. We're too early. This was the first time I heard this and it came to irritate me no end. So we went back to what we knew. We got federal funding and TRX I think has had 40 or $50 million, no pitching involved. We hire a great CEO. I get pushed out as chairman of the board, but now I'm the founder. Very cool title. I like being the founder. I don't have much to do. The team is great. They don't need me. So what am I going to do? So anyway, just to remind you of a few things, stupid things I did. I wrote a business plan. I said, well, $10, $10 billion market. If we can get 1%, we'll be rich. This is a classic mistake. We file 40 patents. Another maybe classic mistake, small companies cannot defend patents. We were spending $150,000 a year on patents. It's a lot of money. We got a lot of them, that's for sure. But remember, you cannot defend them. TRX at its very peak did not have the money to defend any patent. Here's the customary crazy revenue projection. We were gonna go from three or 400,000 to 25 million in five years. Okay, always do that. You should make a revenue projection. It's required. People wanna see that you're confident. It took us 10 years to hit that target and we sold the company in 2022. So this was, almost, uh, it was almost like, I thought I could make a startup company. We did make a startup company and the company turned out to be wonderful, but not necessarily because of what I did personally. Then we sold Technosciences. So a French group bought us, all our debt is gone. The senior staff get half the proceeds. I get fired, but I get a severance package. Is that cool? Founder always gets fired. So keep that in mind. Uh, I don't have to go to the office ever. What should I do? I'm still young. I'm only 70. I know it doesn't seem that young, does it? What should I do? So I decide I'll become a serial entrepreneur. I kept reading that West Coast stuff. I'll make a med tech company. Why not? I'll cure disease. Remember you got the ego part really covered. How hard can it be? And then I heard about this FDA <laughs> and uh, I don't know about the FDA. So I'm really glad, Cheryl, you don't have to deal with them. So we made this, this startup studio, fantastic. We'll take ideas from all over the place. We'll use engineering, business, finance to make them into something. We'll create startup companies. I thought of this all by myself. And then some guy told me there are 300 startup studios. So once again, it's very difficult to be original and to innovate. It's very, very hard, not just in this kind of thing, but when you're making any kind of device. So keep that in mind, it's really hard to do innovation. Universities teach innovation. I have no idea what the heck they teach. And I used to be in the university. We made all these companies, some are wonderful. Next Step Robotics addresses stroke. Sonosa addresses um, obstructive sleep apnea, neurosonics, uh, brain tumors, et cetera. Modular matter, Jeff Geyer is here. Fantastic. We've had a great run um, uh, creating companies. Some are out of Hopkins, some are out of Maryland, and some we've started ourselves. All right, so that's, how I got to be here and to be so wise that I can give you advice. 
So I had an exit, Techno Sciences, uh, Amy and the CEO mostly did that. PRX Systems, a fantastic company. I'm very proud of those people. Uh, they sold in January to a wonderful company. And then we were in the process of selling Strom Motors. So about 10 years ago, um, one of my uh, uh, staff members, a great engineer named Pratik Gupta, uh, was working at Techno Sciences, wanted to leave, go back to India and get in the startup business. And I encouraged him and we invested a little bit of money. And after a while, he switched to building an electric car. He built an electric car, the one you see there, with roughly five young engineers and a half a million dollars. Think about that. Elon Musk, billions probably. Elon Musk, a great businessman, don't get me wrong. But Patrick showed that you could build a car, get it qualified to work on Indian highways, build a handful of them and attract customers for a very, very small amount. So labor costs less in India, that's true, but uh, an impressive accomplishment. And he's in the process of selling his company for, I think around $30 million. I'm not absolutely sure, but quite a bit. Okay, so I'm wise because I did all these things. I'll teach you how to do it too, right? Not really. Okay, so a little bit more serious. If you're gonna start a company, it's pretty easy. You can just start. Growing and sustaining it is hard. Technosciences is still in, in business. I think it's 40 years old now. Um, I was running it for around 14 years. It was very hard to stay in business. We, you know, it, it's just a challenge meeting the payroll, selling, you sell something to a country and they don't pay you for four months. That's a big problem. So always have a partner. I've always had Amy now 30 years, Amy, 34 years, something like that. You need someone that you can count on. Amy has not only helped do a lot of things, but she's bailed me out of many bad decisions. You need a partner, someone you can absolutely drop dead trust. Unlike planning to exit your company, I think that's a bad thing to think about. Plan to run it for your whole life and then leave it to your kids to run. Think long-term. Don't think I'm gonna make something, I'm gonna sell and somebody's gonna come around and buy us. That might happen, happens occasionally, but you can't plan on it. The only quick exits I'm familiar with are failures. I've had those. They're pretty easy. Real exits, profitable exits are rare and they're hard to come by. Plan on bootstrapping. You're always going to be declared to be too early. I hate this phrase. It's the worst thing you can say to me. Yeah, too early. Read this kind of book. This is a wonderful book. Um, it describes great companies like 3M and Hewitt Packard and several others that started off very poorly. The guys who started 3M were trying to make sandpaper. They couldn't get the grit to stick to the paper. They met a guy in Texas who had figured out how to stick the grit to the paper and he became the third M. Beautiful book. You, won't, you will learn that business is hard the HP guys, they were going to repair electronic equipment in their garage. But it turns out people wanted to buy their test equipment. They didn't really want them to repair their stuff. So they began selling their test equipment out of their garage. And they became Hewitt and Packard and very rich and great, uh, uh, great philanthropists. This, this is a very fine book. Start simply. Don't worry about Delaware. Incorporate in your own state, in Maryland. We use C-Corps, accountants will tell you, don't do that, it's double taxation. That implies you're making a profit. If you make profit, make money and distribute it, good for you. 
but C corps are are better in many many ways. Do it yourself. You can incorporate in Maryland for around three hundred dollars. Takes a handful of days. You need a bank account, tax ID. You can do it yourself. A lawyer will charge you a lot of money, maybe thousands of dollars. Register on SAM.gov. This will allow you to bid on government contracts. It's free. It's painful. It takes an hour or two hours, but once you're registered, you're eligible to bid. Write proposals. You can go around pitching if you want to, but it's, it's easier to write proposals, frankly. Keep working at it. The government and the state are the very best early stage investors. You will lose often. Keep at it. When we first started writing SBR proposals, we won about 50% of the time, sometimes more. And then other people came in and we now we win maybe one in five or one in something. It's hard, you're gonna lose. Persistence tops intelligence. There are a lot of smart people. Don't rely on that. Sure, you're smart, but if you stick to it, you can succeed. So keep doing, try this, try to bootstrap your way this way. Look for every opportunity. And don't go to webinars. Don't fret over your pitch deck. So around our area, there's entirely too much emphasis on pitching. We're gonna pitch, we're gonna make a great deck. We're gonna use this tool to make a great deck. Forget about that. There's this fellow guy, Kawasaki, 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30 point font. Now you can tell I'm not using 30 point font and I'm gonna take longer than 20 minutes, et cetera. So I'm not doing in this. This is what you need, it's good enough. All you're gonna do is explain your company to some, somebody. You're, if you go to these entrepreneurship programs, they put way too much emphasis on decks and pitching. You're on the East Coast in Baltimore, College Park or Beltsville, except for Cary. Cary, you can pitch all you want. You're not in the Valley. You're, there's not gonna be a Valley in Maryland. I've been waiting for the Valley for 30 years, not coming. Don't worry about your deck. Write an old fashioned business plan. Well, maybe. Basically, so people like me think in text, I can explain things um, by writing them out better than, um, than by making a deck. Explain to yourself and your team what you're trying to do and why are you doing it? Take your time. It's basically just an exercise in explaining what your company is. Make financial projections by all means. You'll really enjoy them years later. I've looked back at everyone I've ever written. I am a very optimistic person when I'm writing those things. Never works out like that. But I tell you the truth, I don't actually care. Project, you know, get yourself a complicated spreadsheet and make a hockey stick uh, growth chart. You'll feel proud of it when you make it. Just don't count on it actually happening. What about i -Corps? Well, what about i -Corps? So I've been to i five times, I think. Took twice to the NSF i the real serious i -Corps. What about i -Corps? It's a race to get 100 interviews. Are you gonna have 100 customers? You know, in the search and rescue business, there were maybe 50 countries that would buy stuff maybe 20, there were no customers to interview. If 100 is good, why not 200? Why not 1,000? Why not interview them all? So this race, and they actually calibrate every week how many you did, and they put, list you relative to other, com other companies in the mix. Really, that's a, that's a metric for success. Of course, you want to understand your customers, but they don't give you any real practical advice. How do you hire people? How do you hold on to them? How do you meet the payroll? When you're having trouble meeting the payroll, how do you dodge creditors? How do you fire your partners like me? It's, it, 
business is, is not about customer interviews or the lean startup model. You're already lean. You don't have any money. Don't worry about that, that strange chart. Don't pay too much attention to West Coast jargon, MVP. What the heck does that really mean? You know, is your minimal viable product worth anything to anybody? That's the right question. Business plan and pitch competitions, people go to those all the time. You might win $10,000, $5,000, I don't know. They're mostly for students. They're not for you. You're, you're trying to build a serious business. Don't waste your time on those. Go to a couple of webinars, but you'll see they repeat themselves. They're not really very useful. Round tables, fireside chats, don't do that. Just build your product like uh, Cheryl showed us. Hold it up. Show it to somebody. I'm interested in her product. I want, might want to find out if I could uh, finagle a share in her company. Build your prototype. Show it to people. Don't waste time on MTech's special workshop on Wednesday because you missed that one already. What about venture capital? What time is it? Oh, we have a little time. Don't worry about venture capital. So venture capital is currently very hot. Um, let me get rid of this. Uh, there were roughly 5,000 VC deals in 2021 for $329 billion. Wow, there ought to be some for you, right? And there were 5 million companies formed in 2021 and 4,500 4, got venture capital. Now there were 100, there were 1.3 million that had employees. So you could make it better odds if you like, but less than, far less than 1% got venture capital. You're not gonna get venture capital or if you do, you're going to get it from a very small company that claims to be venture capital. You're too early. Don't worry about venture capital. Okay? But you say, wow, Maryland had $2 billion in venture capital in 2021. That was the biggest year ever. There were 175 deals. California had 5,000 deals. New York, 2,000. Massachusetts, 1,000. Most of the money went to the top 10 companies, 61%. If you study these companies, they're very mature. Some of them have been around like robotic research for 20 years. Some are younger, but they're in a sexy area like cybersecurity. It's just not worth your time. These are well-established companies. There are 134,000 companies in Maryland that have employees. 0.13% got venture funding last year. Just don't worry about your deck. Don't worry about getting venture funding. What should you do? Define the capital structure of your company. Who owns the company and has options? Use stock options wherever you can to bring people in and hold on to them. Find some money maybe $10,000, maybe $50,000. The state or universities have, pro, have small money programs. You can get that money. Work very lean. Pay yourself as little as possible if you can stand it. Build a prototype, build it. Software, service, whatever it is, build something that's tangible. When you write proposals for SBIRs or something, Include a picture of what you have. Even if it looks kludgy, show people you have something. Show it to potential customers. Revise it if they don't like it or find some new customers. After all, you've interviewed a hundred of them. Bootstrap, plan on bootstrapping. Write proposals for every opportunity you can find. Federal, state, private, aim to get $100,000 per person. That means you can pay a person and have a place for them to work, but settle for whatever you can get. Always be selling. If you're talking, you're selling. 
I'm selling you the MDC model right now. Sell your product, your company, and think of your company as the product, not the products that are part of the company. The company is the product. Think of it like that. And so that, that's one of the mistakes I didn't make. I always thought of it that way. It was the company that we were advertising when we're traveling all over the place. What about partners? Corporate partners. Should I partner with Johnson and Johnson? Should I partner with this guy, with that guy? Why? Partners tend to divide your, your energy and your attention. If you have a weakness in your company, and you will, try to fill it some other way. Teaming, well, if you're going to write a proposal, make sure you get a very specific deal so that your team mate does what they're supposed to do. Very often you'll team with somebody and they won't do anything and you will have committed to giving them half the money. Hiring, hire people who know things you don't or who aren't really like you. Don't hire, if you're crazy like me, try not to hire more crazy people. Firing, you will have to fire people eventually. Don't delay, make it quick. Walk them out of the office the day you fire them. It's painful. The first couple of times are horrible, but it's generally in the best interest of the person. Use stock options with vesting three, four years for everybody in your company. When we sold TRX, everybody in that company had some options and everybody got some money. Angel investors, yes, choose them very carefully and only allow one representative per group to be on your board or to interact with you. You don't have time to worry about 10 different angel investors. Don't take money from your friends and family unless they're rich. If they're rich, well, okay, why not? But don't do that. I, I just don't like owing my friends money or certainly not my family. Um, don't, don't do that if, if at all possible, no matter how much they want to help. Now, if your family is wealthy, I'm sure that's different. There's a wonderful uh, guy, this guy Kawasaki, 10 mistakes entrepreneurs make. He has a YouTube video. He's a great speaker. Uh, of the 10 mistakes, I think I've made 57% of them myself. Um, Watch his video. He's a great speaker. Now he's talking to West Coast companies. Uh, he's all talking. He's talking about don't think your venture capitalists will add value. You don't need to worry about that mistake because you won't have a venture capitalist. These are the books I think are really good. Um, Built to last. This about HP, uh, 3M. 3M is the most amazing company I think. Uh, Otis Elevator. Good to great, companies that made a transition from being good to being great. Interestingly, of the 10 companies I think that went from good to great, four of them are failing, but okay. And then The Art of the Start, very beautiful, colorfully written book, um, well worth uh, reading. And you can find all these, I think, for free. Okay, so that's, that's uh, the end of the advice session. What about me? Am I going to do practice what I preach? I'm still young. I'm not going to tell you how young. So I decided to make a company in my garage. So this is my garage. Here's a robot. It's going to be for a farm. It'll carry around hay bales and do useful stuff. Uh, Neo, can you erase this part? There's a trade secret here, the way it looks. We're starting it in the garage. I got one employee, and he's been working in the garage all summer. He's quite a kid. So contact us at MDC Studio if you'd like us to help you out in some way. Um, don't try to do do it the way I did. Don't take such big chances. Be careful. Bootstrap. Don't worry about raising money. It's hard. 
it takes so much time forever. You're out there pitching, raising money, et cetera. Don't worry about that. Just build your product and show it to people the way, uh, the way Cheryl did in the beginning. That's the way to do it. I don't know how you made it, Cheryl, but I'll bet you bootstrapped it. And that's exactly what you should do. Business is great. You know, we, uh, TechnoSciences, I think, helped save the lives of 15,000 people. Uh, TRX Systems figured out how to locate firemen inside building buildings. There's no reason for them to get lost anymore. Uh, Jeff uh, Geyer has built a new kind of prosthesis, a wonderful thing. It's going, could revolutionize that, that business. Those are the kind of things I think that really, really count. So, okay. So that's all I have to say now. I hope that was uh, enough to fill up the time. Yes, it was. So good. Thank you so much, Gil. Um, yeah, what a riveting story. So we have some a uh, few minutes for questions. Feel free to jump in with any questions. I've got a question. Um, I have basically followed your um, trajectory to a T. Um, I core I was in with Clear Mask in 2018. Ah, um, Clear Mask, Clear Mask. I know this company. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, you do. We were one in. We were at the t the top two. Yes, um, you were. But then. Um, uh, but then I lost the whole team and that's been the whole problem ever since. But that aside, um, brought in a phase one SBIR from the NSF and now I'm trying to negotiate a phase three with the VA. Um, mm. And I saw that you had done that and I'm understanding that these can easily be two, three million dollars. As long as you stay under $7.5 million, you don't have to worry about the accounting, which is another pebble in my shoe. Um, and they can be unlimited as well. So I'm going to do this Tuesday. Yeah, I've got that's a great a, pitch deck. <laughs> but. Wonderful. That's exactly what Amy and I did. Um, we won. We won many Phase One and Phase Two SBRs. We were an SBR mill for a while, definitely twenty-eight million dollars worth. I think Amy, something like that. Wow. Um, but. When we got the contract for the coastal stations, the US Navy wanted to subcontract to us. And they discovered that since we had an SBIR project associated with the technology, they could sole source to us. Right. And so they sole sourced uh, at least $100 million. I don't know. Do you know, Amy, the, remember the number? It was a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think the original contract was 30 million. Yep. for Indonesia and then from there they just kept giving us more and more contracts and it it flowed very nicely once you get over that initial hump of connecting mm -hmm. the SBIR to the phase three so I don't, I don't know if that's the challenge you're having but if it is I would work very hard on having uh, uh, making that like that uh connection can i take yeah. you guys out to dinner saturday night i'm i'm gonna do this tuesday i've i've got one slide to sell the prototype one side to sell the product at scale and then another one to do the phase three um you know thing because amy it sounds like you are part of it and i know that your time is precious and um you can be very busy people too um, yeah so. the, the the problem is i'm in new england and amy is in florida but we let's have a let's have a meeting uh, cheryl just let us know when you want to meet uh don't worry about the uh, dcaa accounting is seems terrifying but amy figured it out a long time ago can be done it's painful um, you know, it does allow you to get substantial contracts and you'll have to be DCAA account, um, uh, audited at some point anyway. So understood. Yeah. Cheryl, um, I put my email in the chat, uh, so feel free to contact me and I'll connect you to Gil and Amy. Thank you so much, Dale. And I'm free all weekend, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll fly to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too hot no. here to be out. 
outside after 9 30 a.m so <laughs> yeah because i'm thinking about that sbr grant um yeah if now's a good moment um i have a, i have a question sure okay of course, I have two because I'm so curious whether, um, Gil, whether you dislike the West Coast style because you think that it's materially inferior or if it's just not culturally appropriate for Maryland. And then I've got a second question after that. There's hardly any money in Maryland. I mean, you pitch and you pitch. You can get, I, you know, maybe you can get $500,000. Maybe that's the most we ever raised from an investor. Um, no, in fact, I thought of moving companies to the West Coast so we could pitch. We had a sleep health company. Uh, there was one on the West Coast that made this little white ball called the Orb. You put the Orb by your bed and it made you sleep a lot better. I don't know what the hell was in the Orb, but they raised $50 million on a $250 million valuation and they went out of business. Webvan lasted three years. They raised $300 million on an IPO on $300,000 of sales. That's ridiculous. We had more sales than that. So that's what I don't like is there's, there, there's a, a, just a wash of money on the West Coast and they invest in a certain kind of, of entrepreneur, young, fast talking, the guy from Uber is, or WeWork is a classic case, actually both those guys. And unfortunately, you know. it, it is right about guy, like female founders raising the odds are ridiculous. It's only like 5% go to female. So exactly. okay. but well, thank you for that. My, yeah. my question is about um, exit strategy. So in this case, without giving up, um, I'm, we're still working out what we're going to disclose publicly. In this case, it, it, it's something where exit would appear to make sense because number one, what the original founders were wanting to do. But the second thing is, talking about like large manufacturers for large medical e device equipment. And so mm -hmm. in, in the interest of not trying to replicate and build up a bunch of stuff, it seems to make more sense to try to get in with an incumbent and rather than disrupt them from the outside, help them disrupt from the inside. So what's your mm -hmm. advice on when exits do make sense? I mean, that type oh, I of exit. Yeah, I think you can maneuver your way into an exit. So Jeff and I were talking about his company makes this beautiful prosthesis, doesn't require the FDA, and it's pretty simple to fit to a person. Now, I'm exaggerating the simplicity, but you can fit it to a person. Why not make your own clinic? You know, otherwise you've got to sell to all the all the clinics around the country. How are you going to do that? You need a sales force. Make your own clinic, and then make it successful. You know, profitable, and then make another one and then make another one. And pretty soon you are CVS Minute Clinics. CVS has 1800 clinics, but the guy who started it made five, three to five. Sure, you, you, you can plan to exit. You know, I kept visiting my competitors at Techno Sciences. I was some, you know, some shaggy looking professor type and I figured they would buy me out for sure if they got a look at me. And they didn't, I could not understand. <laughs> so I couldn't force them to buy me. It was a company came out of left field that bought us. So TRX on the other hand, we developed a very nice partnership with a company which had been recently bought. And it was so obvious that the two companies fit together perfectly and that the holding company bought them. So sure, you can, you can maneuver it and it makes a lot of sense, but don't just think you're going to raise $20 million and somebody, you know, they're going to come along and buy you out. Make it look like you're going to be successful or that you can be successful or that what you have is amazing. Uh, there was a, a Baltimore company called Harpoon Medical. They made a simple device for mitral valve repair. It looked like a knitting needle. Uh, there were other products like that on the market, but it turns out Edwards wanted such a product and they bought Harpoon for $200 million mm -hmm. before they had any revenue or went through uh, trials. They were doing trials in Europe. Um, it was miraculous, but you can't plan on that. <laughs> you know. So I wish you the best of luck. I learned to, you know, once you're you're willing to tell us what you have, like to know what you have and uh, see how it goes. 
Awesome. Thank you. Um, great. So uh, that was a really great session. And thank you for all the questions. Um, I put my email in the chat. So feel free to contact me if you have any questions, um, especially about MDC. Um, so, oh, yes. And I just got uh, your email, Cheryl. Wonderful. Uh, good luck, everyone. Thank you. And have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you now for organizing. Thank you, Gil. Of course. Thank Thanks. You. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye now.